you. There you go. Now I can see you. Good morning, good morning, good morning. You look pretty good. The camera. We all know the cameras make you look better than you really do. Go ahead and tell your neighbor. If the camera makes you look better than you really do. Go ahead and tell your neighbor. Tell your neighbor. How are you? How are you? How many of you are loving this fall weather? Yeah. Has it been nice? Yeah. And I don't want to hear any complaining about wind. We've only had like wind for three days. It's Wyoming. Weeks. Really nice. Really nice. Hey, we've got our mission stuff up there so you can start to see. And missions for us in October is always special. Last year it was over 18% of our church budget went to missions. And I just think. I'm so proud of everyone for that because missions is the heart of God. And so as we give to missionary work and we give to support local missions, it really means a lot to people in our community and it means a lot to our Father in Heaven. So we do that. So during this month, I always encourage people to think above and beyond your normal giving. What is something that you would like to support in missions? And for our church, missions takes on the look of Something for the work of the kingdom of heaven. It has to be something for the name of Jesus. Now you can give personally your family to all kinds of things you want to give and support. But as a church family who honor God, we look for missionary work that is supporting the, the growth of the kingdom and for whatever Jesus is doing in our world. And so that's where we want our money to go from the church. Okay? So we're not limiting you in any way, but if you give to support one of these missionary activities, that's what I, want, what I want you to know. That's where it's going, and that's why we do it. So we have a big list, and I get so proud of everyone every year for doing that and helping. So thank you, thank you for your giving. The offering, of course, goes in the back, and so does our missions giving. Now we have shoe boxes coming up, and you know that that's always a fun thing for us to do, is to load shoe boxes. So here's your shoe box. And here's your first demonstration, and perhaps the last demonstration of how to fold a shoebox. I may actually put one on YouTube so that you can revisit this if you want to. So Gigi and I folded one this morning to remember. It's very easy to do. Fold it, make sure you turn it this way. Fold the sides in. Fold it down. Fold them up. Are you watching? Are you watching? Put them in the little holes there. There's little holes in the bottom, right? Fold it. Fold it around, make sure it goes through those little holes. And there's the box part. The top is easier. Are you watching? Are you watching? This is called origami in church. Are you watching? Are you a magician of some sort? Got it? Fold that around, fill the little holes. Next side, same thing. Fold that around, fill the little holes. Facial expressions help when you're doing this. <laughs> I, missed one thing. I missed one. Sorry. It was premature clapping. That was nice. Premature applause. Look what I did. You see what I did? Yeah, this flap has to go in there too. So that flap and the animals. <laughs> Premature booing. Wait, wait, wait. It's hard to do when you're not sitting on a table. It's like trying to hold three or four chickens at a time. Okay, now wait, wait. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. Oh, I already. Okay, there it is. There's a box. Right away. Right so somebody can have a box. She knows how to fold them. She can help you. Again. There are shoebox instructions online if you go to Operation Christmas Child. There is, we'll give some instructions on what to load the box with. You're going to pick a boy or a girl. There's going to be three different ages on that. I think some of the brochures are at the back still. And then you'll tape that on the top of the box for who it is for. Boy, girl, and then what age. And then there's also helps for what you put in the shoebox. So you can either check it here, you can do it online. Um, or you can do donations online as well. If you say, well, I don't want to pack a box, but you want to give a donation to help ship them, by Christmas time, they'll be all over the world, and we'll check out to see. They did millions of them last year. 
So it's quite a quite a wonderful thing. So and then in each box goes the message of Jesus. In each box they put the message of Jesus. Franklin Graham's organization does that. So you know last week they had their march out in uh, the mall in Washington D.C. Thousands of people were there. It was really great. But um, so we'll start that right away. So if you want to grab boxes on the way out, you're welcome to do that. Okay. All right. Whisper to your neighbor quick, say, I can fold the box faster than you. Go ahead, tell your neighbor. I can fold the box faster than you. So we may have to have a speed box folding contest here with the, later this month so we can actually test if you are faster than your neighbor. Um, next Sunday, Mrs. Gordon and I will be in Minnesota for Grayson's second birthday party. So we'll have YouTube church. So you know that. Nope. Come here next Sunday. It'll be on YouTube. On the 18th, we'll have communion together here at church. First time since last February, I think. Because we didn't have Easter together. We didn't have all that. So um, that'll be nice. We have little cups. They're individual cups. We'll hand them. You pick them out of the box. And then they have a wafer on top and then the juice, so it's just for you, so it'll be good. All right, any other announcements this morning? Okay, thanks for coming to church. You know what I love? Most of the back rows are like empty and everybody's up front. I love it. Carrie, you're kind of alone back there. Are you okay, you and Norm? Yeah, you got it. You got it, okay, good. All right, thank you. Thank you, I love it. I love it. All right, birthdays. Any birthdays to celebrate? Gigi had her birthday. She turned seven, Yay. along with several others. Anybody else? No birthdays today? Wow, Gigi, look around. Nobody's getting any older, are they? <laughs> Go ahead, tell the neighbor. Say, you look older than I do. Tell your neighbor. You look older than I do. <laughs> tell them. Tell them. Tell them. You look older than I do. And then you can say, that's because you are older than I do. Church is safe. Church is safe, all right? Any anniversaries to celebrate? Anniversaries? No anniversaries? Oh, okay. Well, if you're with your honey, tell them, thanks for sticking it out with me. Tell them, thanks for sticking it out with me. Right? Right? Well, glad you came to church. Missions Month. Our uh, purpose of our church is this. It's very simple. A long time ago, I thought, what do we do for a mission and a vision and all that stuff? And God said, well, it's pretty simple. I already wrote it down for you. I said, oh, well, thanks for writing it down. You don't know how many church visions and missions and things people try to figure out. But the purpose of our church is to help people go to heaven. So first, you check your own heart. Are you going to heaven? Something happens today, tomorrow, are you going to heaven? That's what I want to know, because we're going to be there forever. That's the most important answer you can ever have. I know I'm going to heaven because I trust Jesus Christ as my Savior. Right? Number two, who do I get to help go to heaven with me? Who do I help bring? So we think about people around us. We see people all the time, all week long. And how are we affecting them? How are we doing that? And I missed an opportunity this morning. I blew it. I had one in my heart and I got mixed up. On the way to church, a car had hit a deer. They broke their leg and kept going. So the next truck that stopped was from Missouri. And we should have stopped and prayed together, right? But we were helping drag that deer off and we were kind of nervous in the traffic, yes? But we should have prayed together. Because they stopped from Missouri. That was nice of them to do that. So, who are you doing it? Just so you know, I miss opportunities too sometimes. I forget that. Or I don't process quite right. So who in your life this week are you going to run into that maybe you can show a little bit about Jesus, right? That's our goal. Hey, we're going to sing this song. Will you stand with me? Number 267. We're going to sing this song and we love the blood of Jesus. 267.
sing nothing but the blood of right you gotta sing it loud okay ladies first two you start here we go and nothing but the blood of jesus that he sent Jesus to come and bring us salvation. From the Lord Jesus, the disciples were the ones who carried the message. And then it spread all over, and who told you about Jesus is the question. Somebody told you, and so who's next? That's always the question of missions. That's what missions is about, carrying the gospel and the good news of Jesus Christ. Once we have spread that message and told it, we go baptize and we teach and we testify again. That's our mission in this world. Someone did it for me. Why would they do that for you? Are you worth it? Well, God thought you were. God thought you were so worth it that his son would become the sacrifice for my life and for yours. Are you worth it? So is somebody else worth it? Yes. Hey, we got a new song for you this morning. I'm going to sing this. It's called I Will Fear No More. It's by a group called The Afters. I don't know about their name, but I like their song a lot. So we're going to sing this. If you care to join us, you're welcome. Otherwise, you can listen. All right?
So <laughs> do I saw you lip syncing that and mumbling that, I love it. And I find myself mumbling it all week long. It's so good. Every anxious thought. Anybody had anxious thoughts this week? Heavy weights. I like it. We'll do it one more time. sometimes to live alone, but we shouldn't have to. As Christians, we help people go to heaven and overcome their fears and have hope. That's one of the things we're going to talk about this morning. What reasons do I have for the hope that I have in my heart? What are the reasons for that hope? Everyone sing this song. We love this one. Hallelujah for the cross. We leave this song.
words of Jesus. Jesus called out with a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And when he said this, we read this fast. Hallelujah. over at Valley Merck, their family does. So we want to pray for their little guy um, that can remove 70% of the tumors, what Mary Jane understood, and the rest they have to leave because of its location. So we want to pray for this little two-year-old guy and his family as they go down tomorrow for Children's Hospital. Father, we lift them to you today, his family. And it's easy for us sometimes when everything's okay not to talk about be afraid and we'll fear no more. But uh, 
these anxious thoughts, Lord, we do pray for this family that they would subside for their little guy. Surgery would be successful and things would go well for them. We do pray for healing for this little man. Bless his family. And God, let them know that you are with them and that you bring courage to them today. Thank you for hearing our prayers, Lord. Thank you always in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Any other prayer requests this morning? I'd like to lift Bailey up. We're going to pray for Bailey. Thank you, God, for uh, being with us in our times of struggles and troubles. And uh, we pray for Bailey and Antonio and ask God that you will touch and be with them. And help them in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Uh, for the town of Porkington, so that it doesn't end up like all the other cities <coughs> with all the riots and stuff. Uh, we do want that, don't we, Elise? Like our place, our home, the safe and the way it should be. Father, we pray for our communities right here in, in Goshen County and Western Nebraska. We ask God that you would keep us healthy and safe. Thank you for our responders as they help us in so many ways from fire and police and ambulance and sheriff's department, highway patrol, for our National Guard here in town. Father, thank you for the people who live here. We pray for our hearts during these elections and politics that it doesn't overpower and cause us to grow animosity towards our neighbors. We pray, God, for our homes to be safe and things to be good. And we ask God as at least prays and reminds us, Lord, help us to have a wonderful community, we pray. Forgive us when we don't do that. Forgive us for time when we put the struggle in hearts of people. Thank you, Father. I love you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. <laughs> Randy. Pray for President Trump and his wife, for staff, and pray for him. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Father, we do think of... Uh, President and people who've been around and are be showing symptoms for this COVID. And so God, we just ask for healing for those people. Give them strength and leading and, and help, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Randy. Jeff. Yeah. Continue prayers for Schlegel Manufacturing. Yeah. We prayed last week, Brian. Are you guys okay out there? No one was hurt, is what we had to do. No. That was the good news. God, thank you for helping us, our businesses and people right here in our communities. We just love them and they do so much to help us and so many families around that we just lift uh, Schlegel's up to you and ask God for your wisdom and your help in them. And thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Carol? Do we have a prayer for Sharon Jones? Sharon, thank you. Sharon, this week... Um, they put her on hospice and uh, told the family that if they want to come see her, they need to come and see her. So thank you, Carol. I was going to remember to say that too. So Sharon is on hospice and uh, looks like time could be short. I thought that was a, that's tough news. So Father, we pray over Sharon and Barry and Sharon's family and girls and for Glenn. Ask God for encouragement and help in this walk and this journey. And uh, please... Please be with them and encourage them, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Carol. Yeah. Care, care Center again. We'll yeah, they're we'll still fighting up there. Yeah. Care Center still battling with this COVID stuff and need our prayers. Father, we lift the Care Center to you and their staff, their health and their residents, and ask, Lord, that you will give them encouragement, that you will give them wisdom, you will give them healing, we pray in Jesus' name. All right, take your Bibles. We're going to 1 Peter chapter 3. 1 Peter chapter 3. Verses 14 through 22. What does a good conscience look like? Go ahead, look at your neighbor. Don't say anything at them. They'll just look at them out of the corner of their eye. What does a good conscience look like? Because you're going to have to decide if your neighbor has a good conscience or not in a little bit. Not yet. Just kind of look at them out of the corner of your eye. 
and see, does your neighbor have a good conscience? Okay? Don't say anything yet. Don't tell them you're looking at them, because they may not know you are. I want you to read this out loud, 1 Peter. Oh, that's a lot. Hold on. I only want you to read a part of that. I forgot to change my numbers. Hold it, hold it, hold it. 1 Peter 3, I'm taking my glasses. I want you to read verses 13 through 16. That's what I want. Verses 13 through 16. Three verses. Can you do that? Okay, read 13 through 16 out loud. Go, 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 go. Read, read, read. read. A good conscience or clear conscience. In verse 16, Peter uses the word clear conscience. So I washed the windshield the other day on the truck. Right? Got it all shined off. Got all the little bug specks off. There's no cracks in the windshield at all. And I'm driving down the highway the other night in the evening on the way home. And what do you think my windshield looked like by the time I got home? Right? So I want you to think about that for a moment in regards to a clear conscience. See, we can wash it up, clean it up, make it look spick and span, and know that Jesus has cleared it off and my heart is perfectly good. And we can walk through the activities of the day, and by the end of the day, the conscience isn't necessarily reflecting on what actually is happening. The conscience in us is thinking about what happens, right? It's a process in our minds of of choices and thoughts and thinking about how we've done. And by the end of the day, I can just have walked through the day and been around people, and I can have a full windshield full of bugs again. My conscience can be all speckled up again. Because the conscience brings to us questions of doubt and truth. The Spirit of God works in our conscience that way. And so Peter's using this word, a clear conscience, to help us think about how we're doing from moment to moment throughout our lives. Now I want to remind us, this passage of scripture is going to talk about missions. And it's really great because Peter does it. And Peter was a missionary. He was obviously one of the first missionaries. And Jesus said, upon you, Peter, I will build my church. He became the rock of the church. He became the one who kind of led the councils and took care of things. Peter was a great missionary, a great man of faith. And he became that as he witnessed to people about his faith in Jesus. Missionaries over the decades... I just love looking at some of these old pictures of them and how they smile. They're so happy in Jesus, aren't they? So I'd like to remind us how we smile every time to show Jesus where they travel to. God put it in their heart to go places and talk about Jesus. God didn't do that for all of us. God sent some of these folks. Look how fancy they are. They look like undertakers, too, don't they? Anyway, I guess sometimes. Missionaries, what do they look like today? Who are the missionaries around us? And are we the missionaries? Yes, we are. So as we think about this, the challenge to us is, was the person who told me about Jesus ready to do it? Because the first question we often ask is, am I really ready to talk to somebody about Jesus? Do I know enough about the Bible? Have I prayed enough to do this? Well, was the person who talked to me about Jesus, were they ready? We're ready now. When we have a faith in Jesus Christ as our Savior, we're ready now. Jesus said, I come to seek and to save those who were lost. And all the message was, he said, believe on me, for I am the Messiah, the Son of God. 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 14 through 22 are all about serving Jesus. It's missions work. We're going to spend three Sundays on these verses. And I'm going to tell you why real quick. You got your thumb in there? Are you looking at it? Let's look at the text, verses 13 through 22. The first thing we're going to talk about today is these ideas of what are the verses explain. The next idea we're going to talk about is baptism. The definition for baptism in the Bible comes right out of these passages of Scripture. So we're going to talk about baptism. And then the last one is a little mystery. In the middle of this, it talks about, we often have asked, what did Jesus do those three days he was laying in the tomb? Was he just laying there sleeping, catching up on his rest? 
In fact, the Bible hints to us that Jesus was very busy during those three days. When we didn't see him, he was in the tomb. He had gone into the spiritual realm. And he was talking to people about himself as the Messiah. Now, we're not going to get into all that today. That one we're going to wait. But in these passages of Scripture, there's three different things we talk about. Baptism, what Jesus did in the spiritual world when he was laying in the tomb. And then for us today, how do we have a reason for the hope we hold on to? Okay? So today we're going to talk about our reason. 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 14 through 22. Let's go through. Look at verse 14 is where we'll start. Oh, verse 13. Who is going to harm you if we're eager to do good? Would anybody harm you for doing good? Yeah. In fact, at least you bring up a point with all the riots and stuff going on in the country. Some people were coming out. They were going on their way home from work and they were injured. Some people were trying to help others who were injured. And in the meantime, they got injured. Well, who's going to intentionally harm you? Probably nobody intentionally, but it does happen, doesn't it? So when, we, when Peter asks this question, he's thinking out loud. Who is going to harm you if you're eager to do good? But remember, Peter was trying to do good when they crucified him on the cross. So we can be hurt for doing good. But, verse 14 says, Even if you should suffer for what is right, then you are what? Blessed. You are blessed. To suffer for what is right, in God's eyes. Then he gives us these words, Do not fear what they fear. What do they fear? What do they fear? Peter brings out this little bitty thought in our minds. What are the things that they fear? And have we made them our fears? Because as followers of Jesus, we shouldn't have the same fears as they have. My fear is not to die. Because death means I open the gates to heaven and I'm going to wake up with Jesus. My fear is not death. My fear is not an illness that's going to take me to death. My fear is not about the stuff I have being lost, gone, taken, stole, because moths and rust and thieves destroy. We already know that. Jesus told us. And we've seen that for generations. I go back out of the pasture behind my house and there's this beet piler and I love looking at it because it reminds me that 50 years ago when they made that thing it was the best equipment on the lot and when Marvin got that he went out there and he would pile those beets up so people could be picked up right and it's there it sits I can't even hook up to it I would take a lot of time and effort to put it into action again and even if I did get it working is it of any value and has lost its value because time has changed. The stuff I have today will one day be piled in the pasture for generations to come to look at and say, boy, I feel bad for those guys who had to use that stuff. Right? But it is our day today. So as we live, we do the best we can. But Peter reminds us, he says, we don't fear what they fear. So what are you afraid of? Keep going. In our hearts, set, about, set apart Christ as Lord. This is so important to us. Because each day we go about our task. But as we make Jesus the Lord of our life each day, we commit under his umbrella, under his time, under his way, our lives to walk where it should. And when we do that, he holds on to us. Now look at the next part. Here's your missionary part of verse 15. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone, anyone who asks you for what? What are they going to ask you for? What's the reason for your... Have you ever been blamed for being too hopeful? Have you ever had that? Has anybody said, I wish you'd just be quiet. You're too hopeful. Anybody tell you that? I mean, to be accused of being too hopeful, what a miracle that is. You're too hopeful. Hey, look what Peter is encouraging us today. Why do we have hope? As Christians, why do we have hope? What's our reason? But do this with gentleness and respect. 
keeping a clear conscience so that those who speak maliciously against you, your good behavior in Christ may be ashamed of their slander. Verse 17. Here we go. It is better if it is God's will to suffer for doing good than for doing evil. Verse 18. For Christ died for sins. How many times did he have to die for my sin? Once for all. It covers everything. The righteous is Jesus Christ. The unrighteous is me. And why did he do it? To bring me to God. The only reason I get to come to God is because I come to Jesus first. He was put to death in the body, but made alive by the Spirit, through whom also he went and preached to the spirits in prison, who disobeyed long ago when God waited patiently in the days of Noah while the ark was being built. In it only a few people, eight in all, were saved through the water. And this water symbolizes baptism that now saves you also. Not the removal of dirt from the body, but the pledge of a good what? Conscience, Conscience towards God. It saves you by the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand with the angels, authorities, and powers in submission to him. These verses are very powerful. So what do we see in these verses? We see you don't fear as they fear. Set Christ as Lord in our heart. Be prepared to give an answer to everyone why we hope. Give the reasons why we hope. Have a clear conscience. Once for all, Jesus died for us. We are alive in the Spirit. This baptism saves us. And where is Jesus today? He's at the right hand of God the Father. So, let's look at the reasons for our hope for just a moment. Would you talk to your neighbor for just a moment? Why do you have hope in your heart? What do you have for reasons for your hope? Talk to your neighbor. You've got 15 seconds. Give three reasons why you have hope. Three reasons why you have hope. Why do you have hope? Why do we have hope? All right, you ready? Did anybody say, I hope because I know the politicians are going to make everything better and save us? Now, do you know why I put it at the top of the list? Not just because it's election year and all this blah, blah, blah is going on. But do you remember why they killed Jesus? The week before he died was called the triumphant entry. And the people came out to meet him on the road with their coats and their palm branches, and they were praising him. And he rode into the city on the colt of a donkey, right? And when he rode in, they were praising him as their new government official. They were thinking that Jesus was going to be the best politician they had ever had. Because he could take five loaves and two fish and feed 5,000 people. There'll be no more hunger in Jerusalem if Jesus is the one who's sitting on the big chair. It took them a week to figure out that Jesus was not the politician they thought he was. And so they put him on trial twice. Then they beat him, beat him, beat him, beat him, and then they hung him on a cross to die. You remember that that was about politics. Anybody like politics? Some of us do. But look, the reason for my hope is not politics. Because Jesus didn't take over the chair. He didn't take over the government. He didn't take over that seat at all. So politics is not a reason for our hope. Does that make sense? Climate change. Global warming. All these issues. Who's going to solve this problem? Do we have any hope that any one person in the world is going to change what's happening globally or in our climate? Is there any way one person could do that? People trying to do good. Does that give me a reason for hope? I see it, and I like it. And it does inspire me to think that there is still hope in the world because there are still people trying to do what is right and doing good. 
And I want to remind you of that because as you do it, you inspire hope in others. So this is a good one. How about hardworking farmers and ranchers? Does that give us hope? Sure does, doesn't it? As people continue their jobs, continue their efforts, continue to take care of the things that we're supposed to take care of, does that give us hope? Our protectors. I think of them as our responders and our military. They go to their jobs, they do their work, they stand in the face of evil and rioting. Does that give us hope? It should. Shouldn't it? How about our schools and education? Is that giving us hope? Well, things are happening, and hopefully we're encouraging once in a while. Aren't we tired, Taryn? We're encouraging each other once in a while. We should have some hope in this. How about money? Is there much hope in money? Actually, that's going away. It's diminishing. The market's up, 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 up. Everybody's not sure what's happening. They keep functioning, though. How about our family? Does our family give us hope? Our family does give us hope. And when we're struggling with something in our family, we give hope to our family members. Right? Our family does give us hope. How about the stuff I have at home? Does it give me hope? What? Sure does. I'm making little bales of hay. It's so awesome. I love it. it gives me hope. Why? Because next year's coming. And what am I going to do? I'm going to make some more hay. Why? Because it's so valuable. No. God put us on this planet to do this. This is what we do, and we have hope about it. Your ancestors, those crazy Germans, they could grow anything anywhere if they had a little water, couldn't they? And you think they weren't going to look at the next year coming, and they were going to throw their seeds out and say, I'm not going to do it next year. Did they ever say that? Oh, no, they didn't. Hope. It's going to grow again. It's going to come back. What are my reasons for hope? What is a hope? And can we really have it today? I think about hope in my heart and how important it is. So Peter gives us some spiritual reasons for hope, okay? So when we look at these, I want you to think about your heart. This isn't just about the stuff around us, but what does Peter give us? Peter is trying to make me alive to the message of missions and to Jesus. Verses 15 and 18 are the reasons for our hope, okay? As Christians, this is our reason for our hope. Here we go. We hope in this. Look at verse 15. Christ as my Lord. Well, Christ died on the cross, but he came back out of the tomb. And so the reason, number one reason I have for hope is because I'm not going to stay dead. The number one reason for my hope in Jesus Christ is I won't stay dead. I'm going to be like him. I'm going to raise from the dead, and I will be alive forever. So when somebody says, why are you so hopeful? You're going to say, because I'm like Jesus. I'm not staying dead. There are people who are just trying to prolong life because they don't know what's going to happen when they die. That's not my goal. Number one reason, why do I have hope? Because I'm not staying dead. Number two, Christ paid all of my sins for me. He covered all of my sins for us in verse 18. There's no more sin that I have to carry. There's no more burden I have to wear. It's all been forgiven. And if I let go of that, Jesus has already said it's gone. I have hope in that because my heart is clean. I can stand before God and I am righteous. I don't carry the guilt of the things and the bad choices I've made. Last reason for my hope today that Peter gives us for a spiritual hope is that Christ brought me to God forever. You see the little words? He did this so that we could come to God. We belong to Him. Now, if you'll hold on to these three things and you'll repeat them over and over this week, you'll start to see there's incredible hope in this moment. Incredible hope. It doesn't matter what happens. I want to remind you of people who had these hopes already in their heart, and this is what they did. When Peter went out after meeting Jesus, he talked to people about the kingdom of heaven. Why? Because he had hope. This poor missionary doing his job that God asked him to do. Why did he do it? Because he had hope. Not only for himself, but he had hope for other people to hear about the kingdom of heaven. Why do these people look so happy and joyous? Because they're sharing the hope of the kingdom of heaven. I know 
a little sarcastic about that, aren't they? These people will go into other countries like Africa. They lose their lives from disease and pestilence and people are killing them. But they went and did it because of what Peter's talking about, the hope that Jesus has. Why would they travel across the ocean? Why would they go and carry the message of Jesus? Because they had hope. Why would they look like morticians and dress up and talk about Jesus? Because they had hope. Why do we smile and carry the message? Because we have hope. Why do we? Because we have hope. Why do we? Because we have hope. Christ is my Lord. He died on the cross to take my sins once for all. To bring me to God. I have hope. This picture is always so powerful to me. And I think about it this time of year in missions. In Luke chapter 16, Jesus told a story about the rich man and Lazarus. And the story that Jesus told was that the rich man had much in this life and he celebrated and had all that he wanted, but a man named Lazarus sat at his table and would receive the crumbs off of the rich man's table. But in the story, Lazarus, the poor man, who had the sores on his body and received the crumbs from another man's table, he trusted God. In the story, Jesus tells us that Lazarus trusted God. And at the end of life, Lazarus died. And he went to be in Abraham's bosom. He was held by Abraham in heaven. But the rich man died and he went to hell. Jesus tells the story in Luke chapter 16. And when the rich man went to hell, they got to speak to one another. They could see each other for just moments. And the rich man asked, he said, just ask Lazarus to dip his finger in a cup of water and put one drop on my tongue that I might have some relief. This is so motivating for me to remind me how important it is to talk to people about Jesus. One drop of water would bring tremendous relief in the suffering that we have if we don't know God. In the suffering we have if we don't know God. So what's our goal? To help people go to heaven. Can we do that? Okay, whisper to your neighbor. What's the reason for your hope? Tell your neighbor, what's the reasons for our hope? Tell your neighbor, what's the reasons for our hope? Go, go, go. Talk to him. you got seven seconds. Go, go. What's the reasons for our hope? All right, we're going to take our Bible, 274. We're going to turn our Bible, 274. All right, hymnal, hymnal, sorry. Take my Bible, too. Boy, I love my Bible. Hymn number 274, take the name of Jesus with you. All right, let's stand and sing. 